Hola! So what in the ballyhoo is bios? Is it balderdash? Is it bupkis? Is it meant to bum fuzzle you? Have I befuddled you yet? Well, yeah. Let's get down to business and find out the nitty gritty of BIOS. BIOS is short for Basic Input Output System. BIOS exists as a small piece of code on a chip called the CMOS that lives on the main circuit board, the motherboard inside of your computer. Since the BIOS is permanently stored on that chip, it is considered firmware. All that stuff you see on the screen that appears when you hit one of those F buttons are the settings for how your system was arranged and instructed to run. With a little more experience and acquired knowledge, you can update those settings to your liking. BIOS is the first thing that wakes up when you turn on your computer. As the computer is booting up, BIOS reviews the settings it was given on how the computer should be run and initializes all your computer ducts, that is your hardware, like your CPU and your RAM, to make sure they are all in a row. Not literally, but you get what I mean, right? They're all in a row, they're all, all in working order. Think of the settings as a checklist that BIOS must run through to make sure all your hardware is working. Other hardware that BIOS checks, especially on older systems like mine, a ThinkPad, include the keyboard, the mouse, your hard drive, your video card, all that really important stuff. Once BIOS determines that all your computer device ducts are in a row, it runs the power on self-test or POST for short, to confirm that all things inside your computer are running smoothly. And if all is well, you hear one beep. If you hear more than one beep, you're gonna have to troubleshoot. And that is beyond my scope for now. Anywho's, let's stay with the one beep scenario because everything is all good when you hear that one beep. Now BIO starts to look for a bootable device that can be a thumb drive, attached to your system or an internal or an external drive with an operating system on it. It loads your operating system, which can be Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. And now, once your operating system has loaded up nicely, you can do all your bodacious computing stuff, like write a paper, edit a video, surf the web, or watch more of my YouTube videos. Shameless plug. When you look at a standard bio screen on older systems, some look like the blue screen of death. Not attractive, functional, but not pretty. But how about the more recent, modern, high-powered systems? What does BIOS look like on them? Firstly, the BIOS on more modern systems is called the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface, or UEFI for short. And it comes with a much prettier layout that is colorful and animated. The UEFI interface recognizes larger storage drives that can hold more data. I read over two terabytes, but correct me if there's an update. And unlike BIOS, you can use your mouse to navigate around. Also within the UEFI, hardware like your keyboard, your mouse, and other devices are controlled directly by the operating system which means that once you arrive at your desktop, your BIOS goes to sleep until you need it to start things up again. UEFI also has a built-in feature called Secure Boot that stops intruders like digitally unsigned drivers and malicious software in its tracks. I don't know what these are yet, so we're gonna like have them represented by cute little monsters around here, okay? Here is some bonus information that you should know about BIOS. The chip, where the BIOS firmware lives is called the CMOS, which stands for Complementary Metal Oxide Semiconductor. The CMOS is a special kind of memory that does not erase when the computer turns off. So the BIOS 
which helps start up the computer stays saved there. However, the setting it uses can be erased. That's why there's a small battery, like a watch battery, on the computer's motherboard. This battery keeps power going to the CMOS all the time, so the settings don't get lost. Sidebar, what happens if you never turn off your computer but only put it to sleep? Is that good for the CMOS battery? Something to think about, and I will research, and I will update you in a future video. And if what I just told you about CMOS is still confusing, Think of it like this. The CMOS is like a tiny brain in the computer that remembers important things to help it turn on. It needs a little battery, like the one in toys, so it doesn't forget. This battery gives it power all the time, even when the computer is off, so it can always remember how to start up. I learned that these batteries are good for about three to five years, and it costs about $5. Learning how to access the BIOS to change out the CMOS battery when it's nearing the end of its lifespan can save you a costly repair at the computer shop. And that is about it for BIOS. If you found value in this video, please like and subscribe so that this type of content reaches more awesome sauce, amazing people like you. Thanks so much for stopping by. See you in the next upload. Cheers.